So the story so far in my web shop is that we've made this page which shows the customer all the cartridges that'll go in his or her printer. Now there's a reasonable schlep of coding to get here. All we knew was the name of the printer that was clicked on, which we pick up from the routing segment after the final forward slash. We get that printer name through model binding in the relevant method of our controller and use it to run up a link query that goes into the database and fetches all the products that go in that printer together with all the printers that that product can go in. In other words, a classic many-to-many -many relationship. Don't you just love those? Within the view, we iterate through that list of product structures and on each iteration, we pass it a product and printers object, which within it has a full blown product object, along with an enumerable of all the printers that product will work in. Then there's a partial view that handles the rendering of each product and printers object, of which there are four in the case of the HL3150 CDW, and that's what we're looking at. So you can go onto the product detail page by clicking the link or button here and add the product to the cart from there. But we also want to be able to add the product from this list view. So let's do that. Now that has actually gone into the cart. And if you've got eyes like an eagle and you look up here, you'll see that the cart summary was updated. But we really need to make it more obvious that something happened. So the idea is to put a tick somewhere around here next to full details and then confirm the number of this product that the user has in their cart, if any. But the problem is that that information is not in the database query or any of the models that we've passed into this view. In fact, it's not in the database at all because it's in the session. Suffice to say, I've actually got it set up to inject it through startup as a dependency injection service here, uh, where it adds a scope service. Scoped means that basically re relates to this particular HTTP request. And then we go to the session cart class and we call the get cart method, and that will return a cart. The compiler is actually inferring it. I could come in here, couldn't I, and make that clearer, uh, make that clearer, that's a cart. So in fact, every time a HTTP request is coming through, I do have access to my cart that's in my session. So I'm going to come over to the components folder, shift alt C for a new class, call it number in cart view component and the first thing we're going to need to do is derive from the view component class and it's pretending not to know what that is so control full stop to bring in the MVC namespace we'll need our own domain models so using MVC shop dot models. Then in here, the first thing I'll need is a cart from the session. So that'll be a private field of type cart called cart. And as I mentioned earlier, we're getting this cart from dependency injection in the startup class. So I've got to declare that with constructor injection. So I'm going to need a constructor here. And declare the dependency as a parameter. So we're going to want a cart. Let's call it injected cart. And we'll assign that to the private variable private field, I should say. So the calling code is going to need a method that implements the view component result 
interface and it has to be called invoke. In fact, it can also be called invoke async and return a task of type view component result, but because we can call it asynchronously anyway from the parent view, I would contend that that is not in fact necessary. We're gonna be returning a view from here in the time-honored fashion. So let's do something temporary just to make sure we're barking up the right tree. So let's invent a variable called viewBag.cartString and make it equal to calling the toString method on our cart object. So now I'm going to come over to the partial view that needs this component and we're going to call it with asynchronously using at a weight. We're going to say component dot invoke async and the name of the component. So let's run that up the flagpole, see if anyone salutes. Bum, bum, bum. And it's the ASP.NET Core white screen of death. And I'm seeing here that we forgot to make a view for our view component. So we need a view called default CSHTML in the case of view components. So I've got to go down my file structure into views, shared components, make another folder called, uh, what was it, numbering cart. Same name as the view component. Add a view. I can never seem to find a template for these. So I just have to use an, an ordinary one and change it to default CSHTML. And all we're doing for now, just to test the plumbing, is to pick up this string from the view bag, which we can do with a span. Hey, cart string is at view bag dot no IntelliSense because the view bag's not strongly typed. We just want to pick up this cart string from here. So let's copy that, bang it in, and give it a whirl. So it's fingers and toes all crossed. And here we go. Hey, cart string is MVC shop dot models dot session cart, which is the result of calling to string on our cart object. So now we've just got to figure out how many of each product via its ID are in the cart as we consider each product in the partial view. So in my cart, if we uh, F12 into the definition, I've got this enumerable of type cart line. And if we have a look at the cart line class, we'll see it's basically a line in the shopping cart. It's got the product in there and the quantity. And within the product object, we'll have the product ID available to us. What we'll have to do in this method here is bring in the product ID from the, um, the sort of parent view that's calling this. So this is going to be an int called ID. And we're going to want to keep track of the quantity that we found as we go through the cart. So we'll have a private field here, uh, an int called quantity. So I better check that we've got something first. So if so we've got cart dot lines dot make sure there's a count of them something we can go at is greater than zero then we can have a look at something so what we want to see if this id coming in from the view is the same as the id of this product in the cart line so uh, it's innumerable so we can use for each And it's going to be for each line in lines, isn't it? For each there, CL in cart dot lines 
if this is where we check in the product IDs. So if the line that we're in dot product dot ID equals the ID we've got coming in. So if the product IDs are the same, we want to set the private int quantity to the cart line quantity. Quantity equals CL dot quantity. This uh, private field is going to initialize to zero by default. So here I'm just going to say view bag dot number in cart equals quantity. Control L, Control L. So passing that through in the view bag to the view, the view is default. So at if view bag dot quantity is greater than zero, we'll want to output this thing that's telling them how much they've got in the cart, otherwise we're not going to output anything. So we'll grab that and put it in there and we'll say at view bag dot number in cart in your cart. Okay, save so, all well, that better give that a whirl, see how we're getting on. So what happens if we put something in the cart? Let's have a look. Let's put a cyan compatible cartridge in the cart. And that has not worked, my friends. And it occurs to me that that is because I forgot to pass in the all important product ID from the view that's calling it, which is here. And here we are on a bound to spin up a new anonymous type. So we'll go with a new ID equals, and then we've got to fish out the ID from here, which is uh, model.product.id, I'm guessing. So now when we add, say, this magenta one, we're getting the confirmation here of one in your cart. Let's try adding another one and it bumps up to two in your cart. So let's just tart up the HTML of our component a little bit with some bootstrap classes and a fancy tick from Font Awesome. And there you go, we've got a working version one proof of concept. And stick around for the next video when I'm gonna go back over this code and make some pretty obvious efficiency improvements to really bring this view component up to snuff. The ASP.NET Core MVC code you've seen me demonstrating here is part of an e-commerce site that, at the time I'm recording this video, is in production at www.cartridgewiz.co.uk. There you can observe this view component cavorting in its natural habitat and also fulfill any needs you may have for compatible printer cartridges. And remember, in programming, if at first you don't succeed, call it version 1.0. I stole that joke from the interweb. <laughs>